Good evening and welcome to the August 19th regularly scheduled Board of Education meeting. At this point, if you'd uh, take time to turn off your cell phones and then stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First order of business, uh, Mr. McFarland, would you take order, uh, take attendance? I sure can. President Singer. Here. Secretary Baker. Treasurer Friedel. Here. Member Blasey. Here. Member Lauterbach. Here. Member Rausch. Here. We have a quorum. Very good. Thank you. At this time, we'll move into the consent agenda. We've got item uh, 2.1, which is approval of the meeting minutes. We have uh, teacher uh, persons recommended for employment. Uh, staff members that have announced their resignation and uh, open book project resources for the third and fourth grade social studies uh, programs. Um, and that is it. Are there any items that you wish to uh, remove from the consent agenda and discuss individually? Seeing none, at this time I'll entertain a motion. I move that the uh, consent agenda be approved. Second. Uh, moved by Lauterbach, seconded by Rausch. Uh, all in favor? Say aye. 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 All opposed? And the consent agenda passes unanimously. We'll, um, you know what, I, I didn't say out loud item 2.5, which is approval of the payment of the school system bills and 2.6 approval of the authorized legal payments. Do I need to re-vote for that or, all right. They said the whole consent agenda, so yeah, they're not we good. should be good. All right, <clears throat> moving into item three. Uh, Mr. Sherrill, do we have any presentation to the board? Nope, we do not. All right, then we'll move into item 3.1, which is for action. Uh, we have uh, student reinstatement hearing recommendations. Mr. Jaster. Thank you. I have four tonight. A board subcommittee met on July 24th, 2019, in regard to student A, who applied for reinstatement. Restorative practices and the seven factors required for consideration were used to determine the recommendation. This time, it's the recommendation of the board subcommittee that student A be unconditionally reinstated, and a copy of the full resolution is attached to your board agenda. Do we need a separate vote on each one, or yes. are we going to? We can take them as a whole as they're written there. So Jeff, okay, you, continue. You, yep. Student B, um, a board subcommittee met on July 24th, 2019, in regard to student B, who applied for reinstatement. Again, restorative practice and the seven factors were considered. Uh, when determining the recommendation. This time it's the recommendation of the board subcommittee that student B not be reinstated. Uh, the subcommittee re continues, uh, recommends continuation of off-site counseling and academic service for the 2019-20 school year. Uh, again, the copy of the resolution is attached to your board ag agenda. For student C, board subcommittee met on July 24th, 2019 in regard to student C. Also applying for reinstatement, restorative practices and the seven factors were considered and used for determination of this recommendation. The board currently recommends uh, student C not be reinstated at this time. The subcommittee recommends continuation of off-site counseling and academic service for the 2019-2020 school year. And again, a copy of the full resolution is attached to your board agenda. Lastly, student D. The board subcommittee met on July 24th, 2019 in regard to student D, who applied for reinstatement. Restorative practice and the seven factors required for consideration were used to determine this recommendation. It is currently the recommendation of the board subcommittee that student D be unconditionally reinstated. And again, a full copy of the resolution is attached to your board agenda. Okay, very good. Thanks, Jeff. At this time, I'll entertain a motion. When you say the motion, make sure you... Um, are specific with student A, B, C, and D. I move that the recommendation be adopted with respect to student A, that student A be unconditionally reinstated, that student B be, uh, that reinstatement be denied at this time, 
with respect to student C that reinstatement be denied at this time and with respect to student D that uh, unconditional reinstatement be approved at this time. Support. Okay, motion by Lauterbach, support by Friedel. And um, is there any discussion? Jeff, could you state how many people were actually on that board? It wasn't just school board, uh, portion of the school board, um, of just for clarification. Correct, yep. There were three board members, uh, two administrators, Superintendent Sherrill and myself. We had teacher representatives, a district administrator, and a parent rep. Thank you. Thank you. Good question. All right, if there's no other comments or... I had one other question. Um, is that set for the year? Is, is there, does anybody ever, they have it available to them at semester as well if... Yeah, they, they technically could reapply almost at any time after. The, so the one is a set period of time, and from now they could re, re, reapply at any time. Okay. And so, um, but with good counseling and talk, we've talked about the next time they probably will be ready. Um, I believe both these students are presently being serviced um, through the JCC. So we'll probably continue to work with them when they're ready. B and C, you mean? Mm. Yeah, the, the, okay, yeah, the yes. two uh, denied one. I assume maybe that was your question. Sorry. Yes. Yeah. Are there any qu other questions? Seeing no more at this time, we'll move into a vote. All in favor of approving? Roll call. A roll call vote. Uh, we'll, Scott, could you do the roll call vote? Okay. President Singer. This is this roll call vote to um, approve what each. John had so each yes, individual student two. A. Item 3.1. You can just say item 3.1. Yes. And then I'll cover right. it. Approve so approve roll call vote to approve item 3.1. All right. Yes. Secretary Baker is absent. Treasurer Friedel. Yes. Member Blasey. Yes. Member Lauterbach. Yes. Member Osh. Yes. And I vote yes. Okay, and it's unanimous. <clears throat> Thank you. All right, we will move into item four, which is request to address the board. I believe we have a few people who have signed up to uh, speak to the board tonight. Uh, do we have a sp specific order? One, one who let us go ahead of time, and then I believe there's someone else. So you have the one on your agenda, Pam, if you want to call them first and then open it up. Okay, we have a representative from Great Lakes Bay Invitational to address the board regarding a check for Midland Public Schools in appreciation of student volunteers who worked during this, this year's LPGA event. When you come up, if you could state your name and uh, what you're representing. Of course, of course. Can you guys hear me all right? Mm -hmm. Sure, mm -hmm. yes. My name is Bradford Jones. I am the volunteer coordinator for the Dow Grants Bay Invitational. Um, I am here to let you guys know um, on the behalf of the Dow Grants Bay Invitational that both Midland Public High Schools secured the top funding for the volunteer program that we had for this inaugural LPGA event. Um, so that is HH Dow and Midland Public High Schools. They help us fill 200 plus spots for our volunteer and youth caddy programs where they were able to help with pros, amateurs, executives, and really learn more about the game of golf and also how to just talk and network outside of school environments and such. Um, they've also helped with our standard bear program where they had the opportunity to follow players, caddies, and others <coughs> inside the ropes for the first event and really get to see how they get to play and help everyone else around. Um, so those two, both of those were able to raise on each side $2,500 on each side. And they are also able to select the area where they will want their um, donation to go to. So we had kids from the band program, kids from the robotic program, tennis and other sports and even other activities, and they were able to contribute for their work, what they did and volunteered, directly to those programs. So we just want to say thank you for helping us reach that goal, and we look forward to working with the public schools in the near future for volunteer opportunities and more. Great. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. It's pretty great to have that event in Midland, and I know we'll have it four more years, and it's wonderful to have our students involved as well, and I'm sure they appreciated the opportunity to be able to get funding for their uh, special events that they're involved in and support their school in that way, too, so thanks for your work. 
Is there anyone else that would like to speak to the board tonight? Come on out, state your name. Got my notes here. <laughs> I'm Jennifer Ringgold. I'm um, an MPS parent, and I'm here to speak with um, the board um, and administration this evening in regards to um, Chromebook uh, policy changes and the new insurance policy. So since first hearing about um, the new policies for Chromebooks this summer, um, I've been having conversations with MPS families and administration trying to clarify expectations and understand what changes will actually be implemented this school year. Um, as of lengthy emails back and forth just today and a brand new link on the MPS website that just went live, I finally have a clearer understanding of what the optional insurance policy entails. Um, I appreciate that Mr. Desick and Mr. Bruton and Mr. Sharo were receptive to my questions and concerns and have worked to provide more accessible information to clear up many of the misconceptions and miscommunications that I've been encountering so far this summer. I also sympathize with the board and this administration um, with the worry about funding for the 2019-2020 school year and the increased cost of maintaining one-to-one -one devices, some of which are now approaching four years old and have lived through much more than four years of wear and tear with continual opening and closing at middle school and high school every day, all day. Um, that being said, I ask that the board exercise extreme caution with regards to this new policy. Communication regarding costs that the districts have covered to date, but will now be passing on to families, has been unclear um, and presented solely through the marketing of this new optional policy to cover the changes. I believe that the changes in um, what's expected financially of our MPS families should be more clearly communicated. Um, it's very worrisome to me that MPS is creating a new set of financial obligations related to a piece of equipment that is required for academic success and testing. I've stood here before to call attention to socioeconomic segregation in this district, and I urge this board and administration to please continually be more aware of the systemic issues and impact that policies like this can potentially cause. I've spoken up about device policies that could segregate or discriminate based on the ability to afford costs associated with a device or technology access already at parent information committee meetings, district school improvement committee meetings. I've expressed my concerns to Mr. Shower and Mr. Bruton, and now I'm bringing these concerns to you as a board. To date, none of my three children have had any noticeable damage to the devices that they've used since 2014. I don't anticipate there being a change in how they treat their devices, but I can't wrap them in bubble wrap, and I can't prevent them from accidents either. So many families in our district, way more than the 30% who qualify for free and reduced lunches, are a replacement cost of a device, or a $50 deductible payment, or a $25 insurance premium payment away from my financial crisis. It worries me that even though folks don't necessarily need this policy because their students haven't had an issue before, they will pay for it anyway, even if they can't afford it, because now they are worried that they won't, what will happen if they don't have it. Sadly, looking at the cost for parts and labor, barring a massive accident to a Chromebook, this insurance policy isn't really that good of a deal. The majority of repairs are less than the $50 that the premium and first deductible would cover. And it is also extremely inexpensive to get a scheduled rider on a personal insurance policy. $6 for the entire year will cover all three of my family's personal devices for full replacement cost. That's a huge difference from the $75 that MPS is offering to me as premium for three devices. I would like this board to actively consider the financial burden, even if it's labeled as optional, that this policy puts on families. I would like this board to critically think about the fact that this burden is in regards to a piece of equipment that is required for academic success, especially in the secondary levels. This equipment is also tied directly to district funding and success with regards to test scores. The district needs these devices for testing. To be willing to put a socioeconomic worry or burden on MPS families to meet that need for the district 
to me, calls into question who truly benefits from this insurance policy. I see this new policy as a lose-lose for families. I really want this administration and board to do better. Technology, in my opinion, should be a win-win and an equal playing field for MPS students. I would challenge this board and administration to come up with better solutions. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jennifer. I appreciate uh, you coming forward and, and sharing your thoughts, and, and we'll take them into <coughs> consideration. Is there anyone else who would like to come speak with the board? Okay, seeing none at this time, we will move into item five, 5.1, which is for information. It's um, gifts. Mr. Bruton? Yep, uh, these are for information only tonight, both items 5.1 and 5.2. 5.1, um, gifts totaling $5,100 tonight, $100 for food service scholarships, $3,000 for classroom magazines from the Chestnut Hill PTO, and $2,000 for recycling and composting supplies for the Jefferson Middle School Green Club from the WE Charity. And uh, at the end of the broadcast, we'll make sure that we put personal thank yous um, on that publication. Then also item 5.2 is the gift of an upright piano from Mr. Mitch Dobbs, which we are extremely grateful for. Great. Thanks, Brian. Yep. All right, moving into 6.1 in memoriam. I have one thing for finance facilities and operations. Um, it's been quite a while since we've had a board packet update of uh, the Barton Mallow executive summary and then the detailed summary of Series 1 and Series 2. So I'd like to request that for next month. Sure. You were scheduled to have it th this month, and you had one in the spring, but when we received it last week, um, it was not accurate, and so we have sent it back as asking for an accurate up-to-date one. They've once again had a change in their financial manager right. accountant. Yep. It's, it's been further complicated by the spending down of Series 1 and the beginning of spending of Series 2. And so, as Mr. Sherrill said, we wanted to ensure accuracy as one is closing, one is opening and um, we are meeting next week to make sure it's accurate and then we'll get that out to you as soon as it's ready for you. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. All right, moving into item 6.1. Um, Mr. Bruton. Yep. Uh, the first we have uh, sympathies to express to the families of Ms. Sharon Wood who passed away on August 7th and Ms. Wood was a supervising secretary at Dow High for 19 years, retiring in 1996. So our condolences to the family. And then item 6.2 is a retirement. Um, Ms. Tamara San Miguel, teacher over at Siebert, will be retiring as of September 30th of this year. Okay, thank you. Welcome. Item 7 is correspondence to and from the Board of Education. 7.1 is for information. It talks about letters from the Board of Education. Uh, one to uh, Chad and Daniel Fox, and one to Jacob Sinclair. Item 7.2 is for information letters to the Board of Education, and that was from Midland Daily News requesting information regarding employee investigation. Item 8 is scheduled activities for information. All meetings, uh, regular and special, for the Board of Education are listed there. And then item 9 is our study discussion session. And at this time, uh, I'll open it up to our board, and I'll start down here with John. Nothing? Okay. Brad? Um, I would just say welcome back. I drove by the stadium on my way here. Um, soccer game going on. Football games are soon to follow, along with band, palm, cheer, the whole, the whole group. So school is starting very, very soon, I know, but the activities have already begun. Scott? Nothing tonight. Mary? Nothing. It's quiet. Nothing. Bill? All right. Very good. Um, I guess all I would add is uh, welcome back to the students. Uh, they're already, like you said, uh, in their activities. And I uh, hope summer was safe and rejuvenating. And I look forward to uh, having the halls filled with students again. Mr. Sherrill? 
a little bit about our safety protocols and <clears throat> what we've been working on. I shared um, some documents from Mr. Jaster about our ALICE uh, training that we did last year and our implementation plan for this school year. And we hope to run a or ALICE simulation in the spring and then be able to say we are now an ALICE district. So we're not there yet. I uh, <clears throat> also wrote to you a little bit about a, a device called Halo. And so one of the the biggest leading um, health epidemics for student, students today is vaping, and we have a very difficult time uh, determining uh, when that's occurring. If you've seen some of those devices, and um, we know it occurs right in our buildings without uh, us being able to do that uh, as a protocol, so this device would detect that, send an alert to a building principal who can then in, in, intervene at that point. So. We're going to pilot um, a few of those devices at Midland High this year, see how it goes before we go too full blown into that. But it has a lot of promise. Eventually, could detect things such things as gunpowder as well and other items. So um, it's a pretty interesting device. But we're going to go slow, and make sure we do it right. Um, wrote to you a little bit about MTSS. Um, we like our acronyms, and so multi-tiered system of support, something we've been working on for a while, and would like to uh, take to a new level. Uh, Michigan Department of Ed last year. Um, had something in the budget called 31N money that flowed from the ISDs, um, and we've chosen to take our proportion of that and potentially hire an MTSS coordinator. Um, Penny's working on that. We'll see how that goes. We have somebody in mind, but we're needing some. Uh... Go ahead if you'd like. I was just going to add uh, a correction. 31N is the mental health grant. I'm sorry, yeah. It's 31A. And then we're also been partnering with Dell Chemical on an IND coordinator, um, so our discussions are ongoing um, at this point in time. Um, but in a further advance, that if we had someone who could spend more uh, time and lead that charge versus the many many hats that Penny wears in the district, um, we we would potentially could move a little quicker and do some more going forward there. But well, there has been a lot of action around that as well, and yeah, I kept you kind of aware of um, the plans and steps that we're taking and the trainings that we've gone through, as well as last week we had, um, Penny had 20 teachers and administrators, <coughs> or our core team of IND being trained last week by um, Dr. Jolly from SVSU. So we, a lot of things happening going on in there, including we now have our selected um, advisory council who will um, act as advisory to that core group of 20 as well. Enrollment. You know, we're all enrollment driven. Uh, we want to serve our students. <clears throat> our finances certainly depend on that as well. And um, as I, I've shared with you before, <clears throat> as a, someone who was raised in a family business, I want every customer I can get. And so uh, the more we can serve our students, the more all the students we can. And that seems to be working out very well for us because right now I would give you a pretty smiley faced uh, report on enrollment, but it's way too early to give you official numbers on that. But all in inclinations would be that we're going to be in really good shape with our enrollment come this fall. Um, state budget, latest news is today, an extension budget for no for October. Well, um, at best, the budget adopted November 1, which would mean flat funding. So we'll get the same funding that we occurred last year, which shouldn't be too much of a problem for us as we hope the We'll settle a budget that does have increases in it. Um, so it would just be a matter of floating that cash flow, which right now we're in perfect financial shape to do that. So that shouldn't be a problem. So we'll see where that goes. But the latest out of Lansing today is an extension budget for one month as they solve their situation there. If you've been around the district, you've seen that construction is in full force. Um, Brad mentioned the stadium, and we kind of got that somewhat together. And Brad was involved a little bit, pulling some wire and some difficult wire, I understand, huh? Mm -hmm. um, in that in the stadium, but um, press box looks pretty good. Um, pretty pretty much completed at this point in time. They'll swap out some windows that came in the wrong color, but everything else is good. And uh, we're waiting for signs on those stanchions next to the. Uh, press box as well. So that is a very nice facility going forward. Um, parking lots and science labs and uh, locker rooms and uh, lots of stuff going on in the buildings. Adams under full con reconstruction. <clears throat> it looks much better than it did a week ago, so we're feeling much better about that. I think if we had one problem <clears throat> area that we'd be a little concerned about with is the HVAC and Dow. We knew going in that was a big project all summer long. We'll have it all running. Does it cool it, you know, exactly the way we want it on the first day? And every classroom will be the unknown at this point in time. So you're running 
can't remember, 15 old units with 15 new units in that loop. And so that's been a pretty interesting process as we go. And remember, we do the other 15 next year um, as we go forward. So but that's all I have. Construction has been going pretty well. I think we'll be fine for opening day going forward. Budget-wise, you know, hasn't changed at all. We'll, we'll still be where we were. It's getting the accurate official accounting. So when Brian looked at it last week, we just decided not to bring that forward with an inaccurate report. We couldn't get it right from them going forward. Um, off of um, Mr. Ringwald's comments, there's one thing I need to say, that there's always been fines in place, so that is not new. And that was one of the reasons this committee went to work. If we have fines on devices, just like we treat them as textbooks. They're no different than textbooks. And so if we had a damaged textbook, you had a fine. If you had a complete destruction of a textbook, they, they paid for the full cost of that. It's a price, about a price of a textbook. And so um, what we found was inconsistency in um, how to apply those fines. And so we've tightened that up, created better policies to do so. While doing so, many districts um, do offer insurance. They use their, either your insurance company or they uh, self-insure. We've chosen to try a self-insure policy. And so those funds will be collected, go into a pool. At the end of the year, we'll see how well the pool did. If you know how pools work, sometimes they work very well. You know, sometimes uh, you get a rebate back on a pool or you lower the cost the next year. I'm not sure, looking at the damage that we had the previous year, that we'll be lowering the cost, but it was an option for parents that we thought could be out there. And, and I would agree. I probably would not purchase the policy if it's just the way who I am. I have... I don't buy collision on my old car, and I would uh, you'd be able to cover that car if it, if it was destroyed. And so um, it's each individual decision, but we thought while you're doing it, it was another option out there for them. So, But the fine structure for damage has always been there. We just haven't always had consistency. New in the process, moving forward, we're tightening things up to be able to go forward from there. That's it. You mentioned the sign stanchions. What are they going to say? Um, help me, Brian, you were in on a little bit. So one is going to say um, Dow High, one is going to say Midland High, High, and one says Midland Community mm -hmm. Stadium. Correct. Yes, sir. Yep. With colors associated. With to colors. We let them have one of each. Right. So aren't there four of them? Correct. Two, Correct. two Midland Community Stadiums, one Midland High, one Dow High. Okay. Yes, sir. So the two center ones are the community stadium, the two outside are the two schools. Then they have the ability to hang things there too as well. Schools seemed excited about that piece of it. It's always been very generic in that stadium, and they were looking to be able to add some to it. Mm -hmm. So when did we approve that? You approved the stanchions. Yeah. You you approved there'd be some letters, but from there, that was us arguing. Okay. Okay. So I thought that was a, an alternate, and I don't remember. Maybe I wasn't here, but. No, no, that was an alternate. It was part of the stanchion pride. We just later had to choose what we were putting there. Kind of goes with design, right? Yeah, there was no, it was there was no upcharge to that or anything. So back and forth, the architect, what, what 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 was needed to be set in there, and so and we went back and forth many times on different options in there. Okay, I'm confused because I thought that was an alternate. Mm -mm. The the stanchions were the, so the you're side saying? columns, were, right? Yes, but and you did prove that, right? Those and you did approve that. Those okay, were mm -hmm. determined later. That the question you're asking, you did approve the stanchions were an alternate. And you right. you did we prove that. We added that on. Okay, that proved price covered all of it. Okay, but we did approve that. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. What okay. wasn't approved was the extra mm -hmm. platforms. Platforms. Do you remember that discussion? I think you and John were kind of in favor, and if I remember right, and. And we took a vote, and that didn't go. But the stanchions did. Okay. All right. Okay. At this, it says in the <clears throat> for then it says putting the A three signage arches and Three Rivers bid on hold and bringing it back to the board for approval at a future date. Mm -hmm. But I just, if we approve, did we do a formal vote just for that part? My recollection is that we did take a vote on that as we yeah, took, just, took a just vote not to do the one, but I'm, I'm obviously pulling off my memory from spring. Yeah, so the, I just pulled up the minutes. So we had the base bid of 505-800 and the signage arches. 
the fold-up windows, the turn-down wall, the metal roof, and then the viewing platforms. So that night you approved, you discussed? Discussed all of them. Including the alternates, and you approved the alternates except for the platforms, I believe. Mm -hmm. We can pull the minutes. Yeah. Okay. All right, at this time I'll entertain a motion to adjourn the meeting. So moved. Moved by Fidel, support by Lauterbach. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, and meeting is adjourned.